In May 2008, a picture was released from the Brazilian capital to Survival International. It was quickly picked up by the world media. It caught the public's imagination. Taken in a remote part of the Brazilian Amazon, it shows naked painted figures firing arrows at a passing plane. Who are they? Why are they there? And why was the picture and the claim that there are uncontacted tribes in the Amazon dismissed as a hoax? This is the story of a dangerous journey deep into a vast expanse of forest to find out more about the tribe in the picture. Richard Warman, veteran producer of many films about tribes in remote regions, is mounting an expedition with filmmaker Ben Young to find the truth about the tribe in the picture. Are the pictures faked? Why are these Indians there? Are they dangerous? Just who are they? And why do they remain uncontacted? To start answering these questions, Richard and Ben are making their way to Fajo, the nearest town to the tribe in the picture. They stop on a new road to look at the impact development is having on the forest. Well, this is devastation. This is 20 years old. They've been cutting this back. Cattle of the enemy of the tribe in the picture. Bicycles, motor cars, diggers, people. You can imagine as soon as this road is tarmac, the whole oh, thing's going to be wide. And then there'll be cattle yeah. either side. From here, they'll make the 10 day journey upriver near to where the tribe is supposed to live. While preparations are being made, some of the local townspeople are asked about the tribe. Do they think the picture is a fake? Richard and Ben hope to find out the truth about the tribe in the picture. The next step in the journey is a meeting with a key person in the story. This is Jose Carlos Morales the man who released the photographs. He set up two base camps to protect the tribe from contact with the outsiders and has agreed to take Richard and Ben on the journey upriver to the camps. His daughter Paula and her brother Arturo work with him and are coming too. The journey upriver is dangerous. In 2004, Morales was in his canoe when three arrows were fired at him. One of them went through his face and exited between his jugular and spinal column. Richard and Arturo try and find boatmen willing to take them and the crew on the long journey upstream into remote territory. Vai tirar, vai tirar a diária livre, né? Negócio por conta, por But the boatmen seem fearful. As pessoas acham que a gente não pode subir o rio, porque eu acho que nesse tempo tá muito seco. As pessoas falam, mas não conhece, porque a gente tá lá há 20 anos já, e dá para subir numa boa. Isso aí, o pessoal que tem medo mesmo de subir lá. As pessoas daqui acham que não, não se tem muito pau, mas e é muito raso, mas só com compensação dá para ir tranquilo. The expedition to the base camps can only be made by canoe. There's safety in numbers and five boats are needed. After much negotiation, they find their boatman. With all the equipment and fuel, weight is critical, so most food will come from hunting and fishing. The guns also provide a deterrent against attack. Ten days' time, Richard and Ben hope to be at the first base camp before trekking through forest to the second one. 
they won't try and make contact with the tribe in the picture. But if the tribe really exists, some evidence could help it survive. The only quick way out of the forest is by helicopter, if landing is possible. The Amazon rainforest is the most biodiverse region in the world. Home to 30% of the world's species, there are millions of different forms of life. Some are still unknown, unrecorded, or just undiscovered. The state of Acre is one of the remotest regions of Brazil. It reaches as far as the Peruvian border and vast expanses of its forests remain intact. During the last two decades, Morelis has spent a lot of time deep in the forest. He works for the Brazilian Indian Protection Agency, FUNAI. He claims the pictures he released to the press proves existence of uncontacted Indians in the area. But some people have dismissed them as fakes. Richard and Ben are now two days upriver and closer to Indian territory. There are a few settlers living here, known as riverinos or river people. They clear small areas of forest and try and make a living from cattle rearing, fishing and cultivation. There are no roads, electricity or phone lines here. Josepha has a small farm on the river. She just spotted strangers in the forest. <laughs> É, tem, eu estou com muito medo mesmo de estar aqui sozinho, mas não é medo. É medo mesmo. Agora. Her neighbor Chico is an experienced woodsman and has agreed to join the expedition. He backs up Josefa's claim. É que eu vi foi um zinho quando eu cheguei de casa, do mato. No, I was just looking at it until I entered in the mountain. I was there where I was. Then I entered in the mountain and I was listening to the river of Isabel in the river. And then I went back. At the same time, I went to the river of the river, to see if I could see more close. I went to the river to see if they were looking for me, but they didn't look for me. I also didn't call them because they didn't look for me. They had a long hair. They had a long hair. Usava assim uma faixa assim amarela de uns quatro dedos de largura ou mais. Amarrada assim na cintura dele. His description bears striking resemblance to the figures in the picture. It's dawn and time to get going. The shelters used for sleeping are dismantled. Nothing is thrown away, and the cord used to bind the palms is retrieved for further use. Richard and Ben are five days upriver from the town, and they are entering isolated and wild territory. Constantly having to haul the canoes up rapids slows progress down. This land has been set aside for Indians only. There are no riverinos here. They stop at an Indian village to spend the night. Perhaps they can answer some questions about the tribe in the picture. The Kampa or the Ashanika are the biggest tribe in the area. Some have gone to live in the towns, but many prefer to hold on to their customs and live in villages away from white settlements. In the past, the camper have been used as slaves by loggers and rubber farmers and forced to help clear isolated tribes from their villages. The Amazon rainforest has been disappearing at an average rate of 7,000 square miles a year. And as their land is taken away, many tribes have tried to defend it. Loggers and prospectors have often gone into their villages and simply shot anyone they could find.
The Kamba had their first contact with white settlers hundreds of years ago, but many other Amazonian tribes have only been in touch with the outside world recently. Maybe there are others to be contacted. Richard is welcomed with a drink. This is the local beer. It's got makashira and water, and it's fermented with spit. While Richard's sampling the local beer and spit, Ben gets his face painted. They are empty. And a little bit in there, but I can't go with the sediment. <laughs> Paula shows the campers some of the pictures her father Morellis has taken from the air. And the villagers have some amazing revelations. They claim the tribe in the picture was responsible for a kidnapping. Paula's father Morales is trying to protect the uncontacted tribes by setting aside an area just for them and leaving them in isolation. But what do the Camber Indians think of this policy? Back on the river, we meet Joe Ashanika, a camper teacher. He too has strong views about the tribe in the picture. The boats are entering the dangerous territory demarcated for uncontacted Indians. This is close to the place where Marilis was shot through the neck. Richard Warman and Ben Young are making the long and dangerous journey into one of the remotest parts of the Amazon rainforest to find the truth about the uncontacted tribe photographed from the air. The forest provides good cover for any aggressor. An open canoe is a sitting target. With the river low, the boats are sometimes very close to the bank. After 10 days on the river, finally Richard and Ben arrive at the first base camp. This base camp was set up near the Peruvian border after reports of isolated Indians had been received by FUNAI, the Indian Protection Agency. Morales started building it in 1987 and has spent most of his time in this remote place ever since. He identified the locations of uncontacted Indians by making aerial surveys. Although he keeps these flights to a minimum, he's able to monitor their numbers and well-being. In 2004, he was nearly killed. He believes it could be by a member of a tribe like this one. Eu fui pescar um domingo. 
É, saí daqui do esporto com uma canoa sozinho. Recebi uma flechada, desse uma flecha parecida com essa, mas só que era outra. Atravessou o rosto, atravessou o pescoço e saiu aqui. Na nuca, o um, um palmo aqui atrás. Eu arranquei a flecha, pulei na água, atravessei o rio. Tava com o pescoço meio duro. Felizmente não pegou a carótida nem a coluna cervical, senão eu tinha morrido. Merylis was able to radio for help. A military helicopter arrived two hours later and took him to hospital. Despite massive blood loss, he was saved. He thinks tribes like this one may have come over from Peru fleeing illegal loggers who often shoot them on sight. This Funai footage from 1989 shows unidentified corpses found in the Chivare River. They'd been shot. There were people from the uncontacted Kurubu tribe and were probably killed by illegal loggers. A Funai team made contact with the Kurubu. The goal of the contact was to monitor their survival and persuade them to keep away from the forest areas where loggers operate. Funai can monitor their well-being but contact with the outsiders has resulted in the Kurubu contracting malaria, influenza and other new diseases to which they have no immunity. The Amazon was home to hundreds of indigenous nations, each with their own languages and customs. When settlers started arriving from Portugal and Spain, they needed the labor and the skills of the Indians to survive and native resistance was met with gunfire. Many Indians fled into the forest to escape the oppressors who brought war and disease. It's possible that some of them formed the tribes living in isolation which Merylis is trying to protect. Richard and Ben visit another camper village downriver. The camper or Ashanika live in land especially demarcated for them. It borders the area Funai has set aside for the uncontacted tribes only. This is causing tension. Ele não faz isso aí, não massa nunca para amassar. Como pode amassar? Aí ele, ele mesmo, mas ele, ele não pode sair. Como nós estamos tá falando aquele combate mas ele, ele, ele ficou lá, ele queria para amassar, né? Aí não, não sabe se é dele, como ele fala, né? Aí depois ele está andando aí, aí ataca com o Vessa nele, com o combate mas ele. E eu? Eu estou culpado comigo também. Eu queria ir para atrás dele, para arrastar, né? Ele queria para fazer como ele faz também, se comer ele aí, ó. Aí fala, chama ele aqui. Tu não vai oferecer comigo. Vem cá, eu vou estar com presente vocês, ter roupa, para vestir, né? This camper elder seems to think Morelis should pacify the isolated tribes. They have seen and heard figures trying to steal valuable items like cooking pots and machetes, but can't communicate with them because they've got a different language. These camper elders think pots could be the answer. No pote massa. Agora índio assim leva na roupa, leva tudo panela. Índio tá comer índio. Tá animado índio animar. Tá animado índio. Ó, parente, tá tá em panela, tá aqui, panela. Tá índio. Essa panela não acaba. E a, a gente, é igual que nós estamos usando de panela de barro, panela de barro, a gente leva, a mulher leva assim, para carregar, quebra. Esse daqui não quebra. Pode só é alumínio, solta a, a massa, mas não quebra. Morelis has spotted what appears to be a metal cooking pot on this photograph. It's probably been stolen from one of the neighboring groups of Indians. This supports what the camper have said about the tribe in the picture stealing from them. They find or grow cotton, 
which is spun and woven into cloth. Here is a bale of cotton and a basket for collecting it. We can see that the men wear cotton waistbands and the women wear skirts. They are completely self-sufficient and their community seems to be thriving, just like an Indian village might have been 500 years ago before the arrival of the white settlers. Like the tribe in the picture, the camper collect everything they need from making clothes from the forest. These looms are made from a few sticks and may be similar to the ones used by the uncontacted Indians. The camper will depend on bows and arrows to survive. The process of arrow making is long and laborious. They have the luxury of metal tools and nylon cord. But newly made arrows from uncontacted tribes have been found recently which have been cut using animal teeth. Cutting the hard tips would be extremely time consuming using teeth. Morelis believes that overflights cause the isolated tribes confusion and stress. They fire at the plains and many valuable arrows needed for hunting are lost. As a result, Morelis tries to limit his aerial surveys to a minimum. As night draws in on the camper village, some worrying news emerges. We're sleeping right on the edge of the village and um, they keep saying to us to be careful. You can probably hear the dogs barking. Well, we'll tell you what happened in the morning. Richard and Ben have spent the night on the edge of an Indian settlement. They've been told to be careful as isolated Indians were close by. It's now morning. Nothing has been taken and everyone is safe at the camper village. But while Richard and Ben were downriver, Morelis was attacked. Naquele garapé, tem uma volta, tem um barranco alto. Essa flecha aqui, a primeira flecha, o índio jogou uma flecha lá de cima do barranco, entrou atrás do chicão do desse nosso companheiro. Passou assim, bateu na canoa. Tanto é que ela tá com a ponta tá com a ponta quebrada, que ela foi na canoa. E essa daqui, aí eu olhei pro lado do barranco, aí vi a outra saindo de lá, ela vinha no meu direção, afastei, ela passou assim e entrou na água. He can identify the bamboo tips from the other side of the border. 
He thinks the blue cord used to tie the flights was stolen from one of his own boats. It's stronger than the twine from the forest and shows that the tribe in the picture are not only fearless and resourceful, but they are also watching what's going on around them. Morelis is returning to the site where he was shot at to have a look around. Os índios estavam ficaram lá na beira do barranco, dormiram lá e estavam esperando alguém passar lá para para atacar, né? Tá aqui, tá aqui, ó. Tô contornando o pé dele, ó. Tô fazendo o desenho do pé dele, ó. Tá vendo aqui? Tá aqui o dedo, tá aqui o outro, tá aqui o outro, tá aqui o outro. É dessa largura o pé dele aqui, ó. Tá Pois é, aqui tá onde eles estavam sentados aqui, olhando pro rio, esperando a pessoa passar. Cortaram esse galho aqui. Muito provavelmente ele deve ter flechado o chicão, ou assim aqui, ou provavelmente assim, que é o mais certo. Morales believes that isolated groups like the tribe in the picture should not be fired at when they attack, and that it should be left to them to make contact. Eu acho que eles devem permanecer isolados por vários motivos. Primeiro, estatisticamente a gente sabe que quando você faz contato com um povo desse, depois do primeiro ano de contato, dois terços da população está morta. Então isso não é contato, é genocídio. Essa é a primeira. O segundo motivo é uma questão de respeito. Se esses povos permanecem isolados aí no meio do mato e não querem contato com a gente, por que não respeitar esse direito que eles têm? The isolated Indians are being forced into ever smaller regions. These NASA satellite pictures show how the forest is being eaten away by logging. Peru has given over 70% of its Amazonian rainforests to oil and gas exploration. This often leads to road building into the forest, which provides access for illegal loggers. Morales hopes that he can prove the existence of the uncontacted tribes and make the public aware of them. This will improve their chances of survival. But the tribes assume that all strangers are a threat to them and their environment. This is why they attack. Morales' daughter Paula runs the second base camp further north. Her camp was visited by one of the isolated tribes. Foi até no sábado, os homens tinham saído para caçar. Eu fiquei sozinha em casa com a cozinheira. Pensando na vida despreocupada e passou uma flecha raspando o meu rosto. A minha atitude na hora foi de sair correndo para o barracão, me trancar lá e esperar os homens chegar. Morales' base camp had a dramatic visit from strangers in 1998, while he was out demarcating land. Como essa picada passava do lado, perto, do lado não, perto de uma aldeia de índios isolados, os índios devem ter confundido essa, essa demarcação com alguma ameaça a eles. O que, que eles fizeram? Os índios vieram aqui, colocaram fogo em tudo que tinha aqui. Queimou casa, barracão, cozinha, queimou tudo. As pessoas que estavam aqui na base conseguiram se safar levando só um rádio e a roupa do corpo. No dia, dois dias depois, nós, esses índios cercaram a gente lá no mato. Nós ficamos cercados lá. Eu fiquei com medo de voltar para cá. Nós entramos, nós tínhamos um rádio, entramos em contato com Brasília, a coordenação de índios ao lado de Brasília, entrou em contato com o exército brasileiro, o exército brasileiro, nós fizemos uma, uma clareira. 
porque esses índios eles podem, eles machucam a ponta da flecha e jogam a flecha com fogo e se pegar na palha, queima. De lá todo mundo voltou para suas casas e tal. Depois eu voltei para cá e reconstruí tudo isso aqui, colocando alumínio nas casas por problema de fogo. Because of the increased danger to the expedition, Richard must return to the town to sign further government documents. But there's not much fuel left, so he must make the dangerous trip back with only one boat. And he'll miss the next stage of the journey to the second base camp in the heart of the isolated Indian territory. The second base camp can only be contacted by radio, and Paula's having problems getting through. She's keen to get on with the expedition and will start the journey tomorrow with Ben and the guides. It's going to involve several days trekking through one of the wildest and most dangerous parts of the Amazon rainforest, taking the team close to the tribe in the picture. Contact with the tribe will be avoided, but will they attack? This is where our journey will take us next. Before they leave for the second base camp, Morelis shows Ben and the guides the pictures. Se eu você chegar aí, mas... Sim, Nem sim. que você não for lá, mas se você entrar e encontrar assim... Entrar no ritmo de querer encontrar com eles, eu vou querer reagir. A maneira mais possível que eles... Não. The isolated Indians tend not to attack larger groups, so seven people are going on a journey to the second base camp. Everyone's been told to be vigilant and stay together. Canoes are taken as far as possible to carry equipment. They'll be hidden when they can go no further. Most of the guys are armed. Then Chico hears something moving in the bush. It's an anaconda. They move quickly through water and attack by constricting their prey. The porters think this snake could follow them upstream. It seems brutal that such a magnificent creature should be killed in this way, but anacondas can pose as a big threat. When Richard Warman visited the Kurubu tribe in 1998, he witnessed a horrifying event. A Kurubu child was taken while they were filming. Of all the dangers isolated tribes face, strangers are the biggest threat. But Morelis needs to prove their existence in order to preserve their land. This is the purpose of this dangerous expedition. In the past, if uncontacted Indians weren't shot, other techniques were used to pacify them. This camper chief agrees with those methods and describes them. <laughs> Aí tem também, como ele aquele cara aí, ele fez também, né? Perguntava ele, 
Aí, aí depois ele foi a tapa, ele está sendo conhecido. Aí ele derrubou com uma antena, né? Quando ele passa, ele dá show, ele cai, né? Então, sabe, aquela, como ele faz, né? Aí, trabalhando aquela assim, máquina assim, assim. Quando ele passa aí, quando ele cai, sim, sim, ah, vamos lá. Aí vai. Aí viu com ele aí. Vamos levar na vampira. Nessa região aqui, existem três, quatro grupos de índios isolados nessa região. No entorno desses índios isolados moram os índios Campa, que são os Achanica, moram os índios Culina, que são os Madirá, moram os Caxinauá. Tanto os Madirá, como os Achanica, como os Caxinauá, Acho que a gente tem que fazer contato com esses índios isolados da maneira mais rápida possível. E conversando com eles, você ouve vários tipos de proposições. Por exemplo, dar um tiro no índio isolado, quebrar a perna dele, pegar e levar para casa, amassar, como eles dizem, depois soltar ele para ele buscar o resto do pessoal e coisas do gênero. Eles fazem isso para reproduzir o mesmo, o mesmo discurso, os mesmos fatos que ocorreram com os avós deles. A proposta nossa nessa região é preservar esses povos isolados do jeito que eles são, ou seja, isolados. One day into the trek and disaster struck. Lewis, one of the Indian guides, has been bitten on the foot by a small snake. One of the other Indian porters uses a traditional cure to reduce the swelling. Amazonian Indians have an extensive knowledge of herbal remedies. The tribe in the picture can be seen wearing some kind of herb around their waist. It could have magic properties, or perhaps it's another Amazonian cure waiting to be discovered by the Western drug companies. Lewis is taken back to the base camp for more treatment. With two less guides, there is extra weight for others to carry, and the party is also more vulnerable to attack. now in the heart of the uncontacted Indian area, a few miles from their village. There is no other direct route between the base camps, so being this close is unavoidable. The stream has become too shallow to continue with the canoes. They're hidden and the group continue on foot. Then, the silence is broken. Somente a carreira deles, não sabe? Nós corremos para nós ver o que era. Cheguei meio tal lado dele, nós corremos até aqui, foi rato. Aí, nós, e aí o, mas aí quando nós chegamos aqui, eles já tinham subido aí. E aí nós fiquemos aqui esperando vocês. Aí, aí não vi mais, e eles mesmo não viu nada. Nós só vimos, foi só, foi só a água balançando. The team thinks three men and a woman heard them approaching and ran into the forest. Ela subiu, ela subiu um aqui, né? Ela subiu mais aqui dois, né? Subiu dois pra cá. Subiu um aqui, subiu. Era quatro, então. Era mesmo? Repara aí, ó. Thank you. 
Eu jogo o alho em cima. Assim, tá vendo? Só que quando eles vão embora, eles pegam essas palhas aqui, botam em cima do fogo, até pra pessoa passar e não ver. Tá aqui um mangará de banana, outro, outro e outro. Ainda tem banana verde. Isso aqui é uma bananinha, chama banana najá. Que é uma bananinha que come assada verde. Né? E provavelmente dormiram aí, passaram a noite aí, ó, deitado aí. Morelli's his policy is not to fire at them, even if they fire at you, not to fire back. The pilots just asked me to hold the gun so that uh, if there's anyone watching um, from the side, they'll see that we're armed. But uh, the The Indian guides have shot a monkey and prepare it for supper. The team sleep close together. Eu particularmente tenho duas teorias, né, para explicar esse ataque, esses dois ataques desses dias. Como esses índios, muito provavelmente, são os índios que estão vindo do Peru, é, e lá no Peru eles estão sendo expulsos do território deles por madeireiros, eles chegam aqui, encontram a gente e pensam que a gente deve ser madeireiro. Isso é uma hipótese. Né? A segunda hipótese é porque o povo, é, esse povo de, de etnia pano, alguns povos jaminaua, eles têm um ritual de passagem que os, a pessoa, os rapazes só viam homens, depois que mata uma pessoa. Se caso for a primeira, que eles estão nos confundindo com madeireiro, logo, logo eles vão ver que a gente não é. E possivelmente os ataques parem. Agora, se for o ritual de passagem, né, eu espero que eles matem outra pessoa, não a gente, para fazer o ritual deles. <risos> This is the first night inside the forest and everyone feels on edge. Raymond Dino is an experienced guide. Da nove um, nove um também tem também, né? Do jeito nós tem medo deles, também tem de nós, né? Na descida eles podem esperar que não tocar aí e querer flagrar a gente, né? É perigoso, porque tem uns 15 mais ou menos no bando. E... É muito perigoso a pessoa ter o fim de ir pra cá. Daqui pra lá não tem muito perigo que sair a descer, né? Perigoso é. E ficar prestando atenção, o barco de subiu, vai descer, né? On this journey through isolated Indian territory, there have been many footprints found which can only belong to uncontacted Indians. Filmmaker Ben Young has spent a sleepless night in the forest, and the next day, more footprints are discovered. The porters know that many of these footprints are fresh. The isolated Indians could be watching. Ben and the others move away from the stream and cut through the forest. Everyone stays close together. Then Chico hears something. There's definitely something out there. Two of the porters walk towards the noise.
The team waits. It's a deer. The meat will provide food for the rest of the trip. This area, demarcated for isolated Indians, is prime hunting territory, as well as being rich in other resources. But who owns the land? É, muito já se discutiu e algumas pessoas pensam que os índios devem ter o título das terras. Eu penso que se for entregar o título da terra aos índios, pode se correr o um risco de uma grande maioria das terras indígenas serem vendidas e serem adquiridas por particulares. Finally, the second base camp is reached. All's well. Paul has been running this base camp on the Douro River for four years. Se o índio vê um branco aí para dentro, eles vão é, flechar, dar tiro, seja lá o que for. Mas assim, eu sempre falo para eles que aqui é território deles, eles podem andar à vontade. Só não pode é atacar a gente. Since the pictures were released, the existence of the isolated tribes in the area have been denied by some groups, and the authenticity of the actual pictures has come into question too. E os madeireiros pelo homem também dizem isso. Que não tem índios isolados, isso é conversa, é de maluquice de ambientalista. While he has to convince the outside world of the existence of isolated Indians, Morelis also has to persuade local Indians that his policy of non-contact is the right policy, and he faces a lot of opposition. Nós mesmo vamos pegar. Se alguma pessoa não poder amassar ele, nós vamos amassar ele. Vamos convidar a comunidade, vamos ir na comunidade dele, rastejando no rastro, tem que pegar ele para poder amassar. Aí por isso que a gente queremos demarcação da terra só, só uma só. Não vai demarcar pedaços, pedaços cada uma pessoa não. Porque ele, ele lá na mata, ele não está sabendo se ele tem terra demarcada. This sign is many days' journey from the nearest town and marks the border with Peru and Brazil. Como os índios isolados não reconhecem essas fronteiras, do lado do peruano está havendo uma grande exploração de madeira. E esses índios estão migrando do Peru para o Brasil. O que a gente discute, o que a gente reivindica ah, da FUNAI, do governo brasileiro, é que uma política de proteção não pode chegar até aqui, exatamente nesse lugar, e parar aqui. Você não pode proteger a natureza, nem né? os índios até aqui e daqui para cá, não. Se a gente não proteger essa região do lado de lá e do lado de cá, nós não estamos fazendo nada. Morales has helped organize an exhibition in Rio Branco, the capital of Acre. He hopes to bring people around to his policy of protecting the isolated Indians through non-contact. It's our responsibility to maintain, to protect them, because they are 100% self-sustainable by the self and the environment. We need to learn from them. They don't have anything to learn from us. uma questão de direito fundamental de existir, né? E isso é o, o que a gente faz, é minimamente, é garantir esse direito, tentar garantir direito, esse direito a esses povos. Como? Protegendo o território deles, deixando o território deles livre de vazões, de madeireiros, de qualquer tipo de, 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 
de, de ingerência externa que modifique o território deles. Esses povos têm o direito de viver isolados aí até o dia que eles quiserem. E se for depender de mim, isso ainda vai demorar um tempo. <risos>